on you when you get yourself in this situation. Please don't make the mistake that I made. There's no other person who can tell you better than I can. I'm the longest serving female prisoner currently. 11 years is not... Hi guys, it's Ugo Lelo Matams, also known as Gelo Wapazen, girl from Zambia. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe so that each time I upload videos, you'll be notified that Gelo Wapazen up on Sapoka video. Thank you, thank you so much for more than 98,600 subscribers. Na totela san. In this video, I'll be talking about a lady I've just learned about today and her name is Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice has just been pardoned from um, prison in Zambia because of good character. Now, before I go further into this video, I just want to read about Beatrice, who she is, and then I'll share a clip of her talking about her time in prison and her regrets, is she remorseful? And then I'll make my commentary. Let's read about Beatrice. So um, there's been a video that's been flying around and it's about, um, you know, a lady uh, named Beatrice Hangwenda. So this is from um, Wewantu News Media, uh, which is a credible source of news, obviously. And um, they share uh, this article uh, with the video itself. So I thought, no, I was wondering who she was. You know, I just saw Beatrice is out, Beatrice is out, and I, I wasn't really understanding what's going on until I um, read the story. And obviously, this happened in 2007 when Zambia wasn't really uptight when it comes to Facebook, obviously. Um, I joined Facebook in 2008, so it was impossible for me to know about this news unless I called home. Okay, so... Um, snapshot in uh, history, the murder of Monica Chabuera Piri uh, on the 22nd of um, April 2007. Monica Chabuera uh, Piri was killed uh, on the 22nd of April 2007. The sequence of events culminating in the murder and the attempted murder of her driver, Benny Banda, uh, were so strange and dramatic that they could be scripted into a movie. So the events um, paint a sordid picture of uncontained emotions and blatant disregard for human life. Uh, they unfolded like a melodrama of a fusion and explosion of love and hatred, a tale of naivety, deception, sweet talk, and betrayal but also as a story of the phenomenal advances in communication technology and its impact on crime investigation in Zambia. So um, the whole story is about Monica who was cheating with Beatrice's husband uh, and uh, well, they had an affair and Beatrice's reaction was, I'm going to take you out. And she made sure she did. So Monica Chabuera uh, is a businesswoman. Uh, so that's the story, you know, at that time, 2007. So Monica Chabuera is a businesswoman suspected to have an illicit affair with Beatrice Hangueda's husband and was together with her driver, Ben uh, Banda, and were ab ab abducted in tragic comic circumstances on uh, 22nd April 2007 at around 18.30 hours. Uh, the setting was um, at flat number Wilvo Court, Rotspa, Pusaka, the residence of uh, Beatrice um, Hangwenda, as an estranged husband. So I believe, you know, he had a residence in um, in uh, Rotspark, that's where this happened. So uh, together with her driver, the deceased were bundled into her own Mercedes salon car, um, by three male adults and driven away to her death. They were trailed by an unregistered backup car by a male adult and carrying at least two female adults. 
um, as they were conveyed through the Great East Road and off to the inconspicuous point in the Chisamba area. So, I mean, they drove all the way from Lusaka, Rosebank, all the way to Chisamba just to carry out this murder. And, and if you tell me this woman never really planned this murder, then I don't know. So an attempt to shoot Benny Banda was unsuccessful, miraculously unsuccessful. He wrestled and or wrestled and jumped, you know, in the trees. The only thing that he lost was his t-shirt. They tried to shoot him, nothing happened. But then three bullets were fired in this woman. So the police would later arrest Beatrice Hangwenda, um, her brother John Hangwenda. Um, a driver, Charles Mwanza, hairdresser, Jungwe Mangwila, Joseph Panda, and a businesswoman, Perry Moyo. Uh, the case generated considerate public interest, and crime investigators were put to severe tests. And from my observation, this is a high profile case. These are, um, you know, people with money fighting each other. So then, after six years of trial, Beatrice and her Three co-accused were sentenced to death for murdering her husband's lover, um, Chambo, Cham Moy Enterprises Chief Executive um, Monica Chabuera Piri. Oh, she she was driving. She was in the Mercedes Benz when she was abducted. So I believe she had um, money as well, and she owned Chab Moy Enterprises. Wow. So while Mary was a Mary Moyo was acquitted on the count of insufficient evidence to implicate her. Jungwe Mangula was given a lesser sentence of 15 years in hard labor, uh, delivering a six-hour judgment. Uh, Judge Piri said his hands were tied and could not exercise leniency or extenuating substances because of the manner in which the victim was murdered um, and how they later planned to murder Bernie. I, I, these are people who've been watching TV too much. They've been watching TV too much. They've been watching the murder. You know, this was a predetermined murder. Like, you know, really, really determined. So the judge said there were, was overwhelming evidence in the matter, especially from the police officers tasked to investigate the matter, saying, in fact, they deserved to be promoted because they executed their duties diligently. Uh, the police in 2007 were a bit hardworking, not now. No, not now with what's going on in politics. They are not as hardworking. So, you know, he said uh, he had never experienced such diligence, and um, obviously, uh, the, it was easier by tracing mobile calls by the convicts and mapping their movements. Um, so Mr. Jess, Justice Peary um, observed from the evidence adduced by prosecution witnesses that Beatrice was the initiator of the murder. As she had been planning the death of Monica, way back before she engaged her relatives to help her by first abducting her from the lover's house and later drove her to Chisamba. Can you imagine where the body was dumped? So um, that's the story. And I will share the video of Beatrice, who is a convict, and shares her testimony. Listen to this. Lord, that's exactly what happened to me. Unfortunate, um, what happened happened. I want to first of all, say I'm sorry to the family of late Monica Chabuera Piri. I want to say I'm sorry to the entire nation of Zambia. I want to say I'm sorry to my family, especially to my beloved children. What happened was not a good thing, but it wasn't intentional. At the time, I was going through a lot of problems and I had nowhere to run to. There's no systems in Zambia to really cancel women Yes, you can go to victim support, but then you are taught as you are getting married that you are not supposed to wash your dirty linen outside. You have to endure. A man is like always given the right to, to abuse you, to have extramarital affairs. And uh, really what I went through was terrible. I had nowhere to go. I know sometimes you don't really want to go back to that day or the activities that 
occurred leading to that mm -hmm. but for those who have not heard your story they might be wondering what exactly went on if you could please what went on was uh, that my husband had an affair with a woman for a very long time i suffered we we, we went on you know we, the children suffered i suffered i wasn't in the right state of mind when that happened i actually got the wrong advice from people maybe who were telling me the best way to end this is just to get that woman out of the picture okay. which was wrong i regret ever doing that okay. yes. so if there's a woman out there who's watching and she's in a similar situation like we all know africa zambia you're told to uh bottle things up not uh, embarrass your husband out there yes. what would you tell them at this point in your life at this point i would urge all the women countrywide to please uh, seek counsel from the church seek counsel from victim support we've now got victim support don't keep quiet and don't make a mistake of doing what i did prison is not a good place i ruined my life i was a very successful woman a mother now i've been in prison um almost 11 years i don't know where my children are i'm not allowed to see my children i've lost everything i had all the properties everything i ever owned and I've lost all friends. People tend to abandon you when you get yourself in this situation. Please don't make the mistake that I made. There's no other person who can tell you better than I can. I'm the longest serving female prisoner currently. 11 years is not a joke to be away from your children. When I went to prison, my son was only two years. It's not a good thing. I would also urge the, the government maybe to support the women more, especially Minister of Gender. Can you come in? We need you in prison. The women are helpless. They need to be cancelled and um, also our justice system. I think you feel alone when you go to court. I was lucky that I could afford a lawyer. Women can't afford lawyers in prison. Some of them, they just go to court and um, admit to what they didn't do. I would urge the women, the churches, the NGOs, please help the women to help help the women to to do the right thing most of them they do the wrong thing because they've got no help help from anybody to to to, to take the right direction okay in as much as you have been given a life sentence you in still fact, live uh, you just one minute uh -huh. in fact i wasn't given a life sentence i was given a death, uh, death penalty which i thought was a bit too harsh mm -hmm. considering that i didn't do it myself i sent people to do i hired people to do it I was given a death penalty. I actually want to say thank you very much to His Excellency, uh, our President, Mr. Edgar Chagualungu, who dropped my sentence from death penalty to life. It's better I live and teach other women that it's not good to do what I did. Exactly where I was going. So I was thinking, if you have a life sentence, what message are you carrying with you? What is the biggest message you can tell women who are contemplating or are struggling with GBV right now? In fact, I would say that uh, when I came into prison in uh, zero, uh, 2007, uh, these cases were not as much as they are now. It, that definitely shows us that there's something that is uh, not right in our society. So it's, it's actually the numbers are going up. I was so ashamed, actually, that time I went to Lusaka Central Prison. I was the only one. There were other women, but they were in Kabwe. But right now, it's order of the day. Something is definitely wrong. Something is going wrong out there. The numbers are just getting too big. Something has to be done. I would ask the government to do something to support women financially, to support women in whatever way the government can, so that uh, this uh, scourge, because if, 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 if we are just going to, to discuss uh, gender-based violence in these 16 days, I don't think we are helping much. So I would urge uh, the women outside not to give up, to be strong. It's better not to go to prison, you know, to leave your children, to destroy your children's lives. Okay, so you have listened to Beatrice. Uh, she is now out. Whilst Monica is, you know, still dead, this woman is now out. This is selective justice we talk about. Why would a murderer be out there? There's so many people who've even been accused of selling chamba, drugs, daha, 
whatever you can call it, weed, and they are sentenced to 15 years. There's a young man who's in the cells right now for 15 years because of that. And she's only been uh, in the hands of the officials since 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, about 11 years. And then she's out there living her life freely. And this is unfair on the family. Because a murderer is a murderer. She should have never even been given an opportunity to be out like presently. Does she show remorse in the video? No, she doesn't. She looks so proud. And from, you know, reading comments on what people were saying, uh, people have been saying, even when uh, court sessions were taking place, she was always smiling. She knew she was going to be out. And even though she was in the cells, was she really facing hard labor? Or was she there um, all in the name of just pretense to make uh, this woman's family feel a bit better? You know, and this is the power of this woman. Whatever she had to tell these people, let's co collect her. Let's go and shoot her and throw her. Did she think she was going to get away with it? And God bless the driver who was rescued miraculously, that ran away, he escaped. And he obviously was a chief witness. I'm sure he saw Beatrice there. Beatrice planned this murder. Just as, as she planned this murder, even though she says, I, I lost a lot of things, my son was too. You were married to this man. Why would you kill another woman to maintain a marriage? What's your insecurity? What's your mental state at that particular moment? What are you thinking? Is it worth it? I mean, if you put your children first, you wouldn't be assassinating anybody. And probably your husband went for this other woman because maybe you were not woman enough. Maybe you did not do the right things as a woman. Maybe you did not respect him. Maybe you were the breadwinner, so you treated him anyhow. And then when you saw another successful woman, uh, loving your husband, suddenly your emotions grew towards your husband. For me, I feel this is an unfair case because the manner in which this woman was murdered and then this woman to be told she has behaved herself in prison, that's why she has been given this opportunity to be out there. Well, I don't see a well-behaved woman. I don't see a woman crying. I don't see a woman... That's showing compassion in the video. All I see is just a woman who's just telling her story to get justification that what she did was because people influenced her. Well, we've all had men that cheat, at least one or two men that have cheated on you or me that is watching, but we never went that far. We simply said, there's so many fish in the river. And you who was legally married to this man, what have you achieved after 11 years? He's probably moved on with another woman. Despite you trying to get rid of that other woman who's dead by now. Your husband has moved on. 11 years is a long time. So what did you achieve? Shame, disgrace, and at the end of the day, you lost your career, your business, as you stated in the video. Now, this is the time for you to also calm down. Because in Zambia, we have a culture where Somebody is a convict like Kanenen. Suddenly there will be celebrities and they will be all over TV. This is a time for you to calm down. We don't want to see you on any TV. This is your last interview. You are not a hero. You should never be celebrated. With that, guys, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. It's a girl, Lelamo Tams, also known as Gelwapazed. See you on my next video. I love you guys.